All right, so here we go. Let me review as many problems as I can handle, or you can handle. So they're all very similar. We're going to start with uh, uh, da, da, da. 2004. Okay, let's get rid of this music. All right, here we go. So we're given uh, answer the following questions regarding two silver compounds, silver chromate and silver phosphate. So they give me the reaction, they give me the KSP, and like most questions, they want the equilibrium constant expression for dissolving of Ag to CrO4. So they just want the products of reactants, coefficients become exponents, and solids, liquids don't apply, or only solids, solids, liquids don't apply. So we would just write our equilibrium formula based on this, and like all KSPs, the solid's not going to be there. So all you can do is do KSP, and that's equal to... Ag plus, put the Ag plus inside the brackets. The brackets are concentration. And because of the coefficient of 2, we put a square there. And we have our chromate CrO4, negative 2. And that gets, okay, just a 1 there. You can leave that like that. All right, that's a point. Okay, so that's not so bad right there. And then B, calculate the concentration in mole. And that liter negative one means mole per liter, which is molarity, and brackets represent molarity. And so many of these questions, they want to know. Sometimes they'll say, what is the solubility? How many of those ions will be in there? Now, the other key question here is, key part is they saying saturated. If it's saturated, they're screaming to you equilibrium. So they basically want to know, when this reaches equilibrium in a beaker, okay, how much of the silver will be there? So what they're really asking for is they want this value, okay? That's what they want. So they gave you the KSP, so we have that. Now, something to think about. Inside, now, and this is really, really important when you do KSP problems, that you delineate between outside the brackets and inside the brackets. Inside the brackets is just stoichiometry, pure stoichiometry. Okay, outside the brackets is based upon the coefficients, and I know it gets confusing because you think, well, stoichiometry is based on coefficients, but the reason why the equilibrium equals this to the coefficient is because of a derivation where we measure changes in concentration and entropy. Equilibrium positions are based upon, is the forward more spontaneous or the reverse? Remember, equilibrium positions can measure basically a balance between the forward and reverse reaction. So what goes inside, okay, is based upon stoichiometry. What goes outside is based on how we measure how entropy changes. So think about the products over reactants, coefficients become exponents, solids and liquids do not apply. That rule for equilibrium to be separate than what we go inside the brackets. All right, so inside the brackets, I'm trying to solve for Ag+. Plus. Okay, now what do I know about inside the brackets? Well, inside the brackets, aren't there two silver pluses? that are made per one of these. So what do you think goes inside in terms of a value? 2x. 2x, right. Now they didn't give me anything. Sometimes they give you in these problems one or the other. And I'm going to pretend they did. Let's say they gave me this value, which you'd know now is x. To get this value, I'd do 2 times that. Or if they gave me this value, wouldn't that have to be half? So they're just going, in this problem, they're not doing that, but I'm showing you all the problems are the same. They're saying solve for that. So party people, what we're going to do is put 2x. And I know it's confusing, but that's inside the brackets. I've got to find me a nice writer. Ah, that's better. So 2x. And some people, why are you doing it twice? Outside the brackets is due to the derivation for entropy. Inside the brackets is just basic stoichiometry. I know they're linked. And of course, this is just going to be x. And as I'm showing you this, there's something classic. This is classic KSP. When you get this scenario, 2x squared is 4x, 4x squared times x is 4x cubed. And that's what you come up with in a lot of these reactions. Sometimes you come up with x squared if it's x, x, if they're equal. This is very common. And of course, it's equal to 2.6 times 10 to the negative 12. That's really insoluble. Okay? So I'm going to divide by 4. And that's equal to x cubed. And all we do is find the cube root of that, or we do uh, our later of calc here. Handy dandy calculator, 2.6 
Second function, I uh, e to the negative 12 divided by 4. And then I'm going to take the cube root of that. See if we get the same number. That's, I guess, uh, my math key, right? And do cube root is number 4, right? Second answer. Yeah, I get my x to equal uh, 8.66 times 10 to the negative 5. You good? Yeah. So we found x. Now, just stop it here for a second. They could have given you that and said, what was this? And, of course, if this is x, this represents 2x. And there has to be half that. Right, so some questions they will give you this and say, hey, what's the concentration of the chromate? And you would know, well, wait a minute, stoichiometry inside the brackets, there's two times that. So if I was to give you this, which we just solved for, and they wanted what was inside the brackets, you would just go two times that. Because there's two what? There's twice as much of that. So you'll see that. People get confused. Like, for instance, if I was to give you the silver, now we know that, what was the question? I want the silver. So we didn't find the silver yet. So we have to multiply by 2. Right. We have to multiply this by 2 because we want the 2x value. All right. So we times that by 2. And what we get by getting 2x is we get 1.73 times 10 to the negative 4. And that, of course, is equal to the concentration of the silver ion. Again. I, I gotta say this because people get confused. If I was to give you in this problem the concentration of silver, isn't that 2x? So, so if I was to give you this, that is the 2x already. The exponents have no effect on it? No. Outside the brackets is our rule. Products of reactants, coefficients become exponents, solids and liquids don't apply. That derivation is showing us how the equilibrium works with that. Equilibrium works with concentrations in Q versus K. That's separate. But what's in the brackets has to be related by one thing breaking apart into two. In this case, three. Two silver ions and one chromate. So they love to give you this, and some people want to say, oh, that's going to be 2x. Don't be robots. That is this. And so if you wanted to solve for this, it'd be half that. So in this case, they want to just what the value of this was. It has to be 2x. If this this guy is twice as many ions here. I have to make that clear because people get lost there. So now we did that. So let's look at one point, probably maybe two points here because one point maybe for solving for x or using the stoichiometry at the end. Who knows? I have to look that one up. But we're, we're ready, so good. Okay, so C, calculate the mass in grams that can dissolve in 100 milliliters of water. They love to throw a very simple molarity problem. People think complex problem, complex problem is always what? An easy solution. So calculate the mass in grams. Well, what is this? This is the molarity. They want the mass in grams of silver carbonate that can dissolve in 100 milliliters of water. Okay, well, silver carbonate. Well, we know that one of these breaks apart to two of them. Okay? Two of these and one of these. Isn't the concentration of this twice that? Okay, so I'm going to use this x. The x that I solve for there's one chromate per one of these. So using this concentration, which is X, so we found X, okay? So the concentration of the chromate ion is equal to the salt, okay? Let me think about that, because it's a one-to-one. -one. And that is equal to 8.66 times 10 to the negative five. By the way, it's a molarity, it's a concentration. So knowing the value of this guy, I can't use silver, Silver is twice as concentrated as this guy. So I'm using this value here, the x. One of these is one of these, stoichiometry. So they want the what? The concentration, oh, sorry, calculate the mass in grams that can dissolve in 100 milliliters of water. I know exactly how much is going to dissolve. That's the concentration. And molarity is equal to what? Mole over liter. And what are they asking for? The mass in grams. So we know 100 milliliters is equal to how many? One. Oh, point. Point 0.100 liter. So basically I'm timesing it by point 0.1. It's going to get smaller, right? Mm -hmm. So my mole is equal to 8.66 times 10 to the negative 7. Now they didn't ask for moles. 
but we get a point for doing that. Okay? We didn't ask for moles, we get a point. And now they want to know what? Grams. Right, so now I'm going to convert to grams. So, right, so I'm just going to rewrite this, 8.66 times 10 to the negative 7. And now we need a gram form of the mass. Sometimes they give it to us, and they didn't in this case. Okay, so we got one silver, I believe that's 107. And um, chromium is what, 52? Uh, yeah. Okay, and then oxygen is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. Add them together, 7, 4 is 9, 3, 6, 5, 11, 12, what's that, um, 7, 4 is 9, 3, 13, 6, 4, 11, 12, 2, 23. Uh, so for every one mole, yeah. there's 2, 23 grams. So. You did that in your head, Ash, then I did it in calculus. Uh, sometimes I'm lucky. 8.66, I do a lot of errors in my head, too. To the negative 7 times 223. And I gets 1.93 times 10 to the negative 4, and that's course grams. Man, it's small. Of course it's small. It barely dissolves. That's the molarity. It's 0.50 in front. 0.00000866. It's it barely almost, dissolves. It's almost completely insoluble. Of course. Okay. Things with what, what? Things with what? KSPs that are very, very, very small, I mean, they barely dissociate, and this gives you that feeling of that. But this was all, this was a regents level problem right here. You solve for what? You had the molarity, of course, you had to understand which one you're working with, okay? And then you solve for moles, and then you convert it to grams. Probably a two point question, at least, at least one, obviously. Okay, so moving on. What else we have? So, pulling points out of A through C, I think. Now, a 0.1 mole sample of solid silver night is added to one liter of saturated solution. Bingo. Ding, ding, ding. I'm saturated. That means something reached equilibrium. equilibrium. So we have a silver chromate. Now, some people can't see what's going on here, so I suggest you draw. Okay, so I'm going to draw what I'm seeing here to, to make some sense. They're giving me some hints. Okay? And you'll help me with the, the things that I just erased if I need them back again. So i got a point mole sample of solid being added. So, I've got a solution. I'm adding silver nitrate. Something we should know about silver nitrate, nitrates are always soluble. So what I'm really adding is, nitrates basically, because of Coulomb's law, is stretching four atoms in a negative one. So I'm, nitrates are in here, but they're going to be spectators. So it's like Ag plus. Right. I'm increasing the Ag plus. Now I'm adding to this, because it's a soluble salt, um, I'm adding what? I'm adding a 0.1 mole sample. 0 0.100 mole. Now, of course, they said one liter, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. These kind of questions are molarity questions, so keep them in molarity. Of course, it's over one liter, so we know that's a 0 0.100 molar of Ag plus being added. Now, I know where this is going because I've seen this problem before, but to help you identify, they said I already have a saturated solution. That means I have some solid silver, what, chromate. It's dissolving into what? Ag plus and CrO4 negative 2. And some of it's what? Going back. It's in equilibrium. But by them saying saturated, they're screaming to you it's in equilibrium. So that means the values that we got for x and 2x apply here. What are those values? Those are concentrations at equilibrium, and they are constant, no matter what the size of the sample is, because molarity is a ratio of mole per liter. So if you have greater liters, more moles of the solid are going to increase to equal out the same molarity. So back to this problem. Assuming volume doesn't change when they add the silver nitrate, does the CRO for increase, decrease, or remain the same justify your answer? So this is the Chatelier. It's basically saying, is it going to be more spontaneous in the forward and reverse? Now, here is our formula. We have Ag2CRO4. Breaks apart into two Ag pluses, like we just had, and one CRO4 negative 2 aqueous. Okay, of course, solid, aqueous, aqueous. It's an equilibrium. So what I teach my students, if you don't see it, I go stress response.
couple different ways you can answer this. We did what? We're, in, we're adding a common ion. So we're increasing the Ag+. Plus. Now we're increasing nitrates too, but nitrates have no effect because there's no common, there's no nitrates in here. So if I increase Ag+, plus, it's going to decrease. That's the response to regain equilibrium if you want to think along that way. So how can I re decrease Ag+, plus? which way will be more spontaneous? It's going to go in the reverse. And we would say it's going to shift to the left, and both of these would decrease. Now, a high-level way to explain this is by increasing the silver. And I, what I just said works. By Le Chatelier's principle, the reaction is going to be more spontaneous going to the left. And we would say that the chromate ion would decrease as the reverse reaction is more spontaneous. That's fine. But I like this better. So you can see it. Here's my KSP, right? Now, we know that Q equals this, right? Q equals the same formula. If you, we have an equilibrium position, if I'm going to add more silver ions, it's going to bump up. Now it's Q, and Q is products times each other in this case, products of reactants. There's no reactants because it's a solid. So the Q value is going to get what? Bigger. And now Q is what? Greater than K. So in this problem, there's the Q versus K part of this. Now, of course, everything I said works, but you need to understand that. Why is Q bigger? We had a value, and we had this at equilibrium. I'm adding a heck of a lot more silver than I'm supposed to have, so Q gets bigger, and reactions always work toward equilibrium. So yes, the reaction becomes more spontaneous in the reverse. Delta G for the forward is now positive. Delta G in the reverse is now negative. So that Q is greater than K is for when you're putting the stress in? Right. Okay. Anytime you make a shift in a reaction based on concentration changes, if you're changing Q, and Q is the same thing as K, just means that those values are not at equilibrium. And a classic part of these problems, they want to pour stuff together and say, does a precipitate occur? I've seen it all the time. And in this case, a precipitate would definitely occur. By increasing the common ion, what you're doing is making too much silver that cannot exist past equilibrium. Q is equal to this times itself. That's getting too big. And now the reaction is going to be spontaneous, and you're going to make more solid. I'm showing you this, party people, because you see this type of question asked different ways. Okay, This you could have just answered in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, but you need to say, a high-level AP reader says, oh, Q is greater than K now. It's going to go to left. You, should, okay? you know what you're talking about, and you can save yourself a lot of words, but you're going to see this. They're going to ask you, is a precipitate going to occur at some point? And that's the best way to explain it. So in this case, question, very simple, justify Q is greater than K. Boom. Okay. Therefore, the reverse reaction is more spontaneous, and that AP reader is smiling, okay, because you clearly understand this as opposed to trying to jimming some answer. Okay, so moving on. Now we've got another saturated solution. Oh, that's screaming to me too. Saturated means we're at equilibrium. Let me get rid of this. So we've got a brand new scenario. Ah, uh, we've got a saturated solution, silver phosphate. Okay, so I'm gonna write the silver reaction out. Oh, uh, I think they did that too. Okay, they have it here, okay. Write the balance equation for the dissolving of silver phosphate in water. Wow, really? So silver phosphate. We know it's a solid dissociating into its ions. And there's three of them, so it's going to be Ag+. Plus. Do not put plus three. It's plus one individually. And of course, it's going to the third power because... The coefficient becomes exponents. Solids and liquids don't apply. That is coming. Is that thing that says KSP equals that going to be on the AP? Or like it could be. Is There's like here's a, this is an AP question. Where they, is that the answer? Well, it's sort of. They're giving it backwards. They're saying, from the KSP formula, can you give me the reaction? Sometimes they give you the reaction to write the KSP. It's just the backwards oh, way. Goes in front. Okay. Right. So sometimes they give you this and say, OK, hold on. Oops, credit. I should be doing brackets. I'm sorry. Thank you for stopping me. So now we have three of these. So how many phosphates? Uh, one. Okay. 
So there's no brackets or coefficients here because I was thinking of writing KSP in my head too, sorry. But this is the opposite. Give me the reaction. So solid becomes aqueous. Okay, so those go screaming at the video, you got it wrong. Yeah, you're right. Okay, but I fixed it. So there it is. My gosh, so difficult. Take a break, breaks over. There's a point. Count of the KSP. They give me no information. Well, this is a great problem, Ariana. Know why it's a great problem? In the last problem we just did, they gave us the KSP okay. and we solved for the X. They're giving us the X. This is the opposite the end. Yes. Okay. So you guys, listen, there's only so many ways to skin a cat. I go navel up. Some people go navel down. I love cats. we got to skin them right. But the point is, this is the same question, just different. So listen, count the KSP. So I don't know the KSP, but they gave me this. KSP is equal to what? No. Okay. HE plus, which I started to write before, to the 3. Phosphate, PO4, negative 3, and that's just to the 1. Now they want the KSP. So they're going to have to give me some values. Now let's think about this, party people. Inside the brackets, what, what are my x's? What is the stoichiometric relationship? This is going to x and x. Right. Now, in this case, if we had KSP, we could solve for the three. We could solve for this. Okay, but they're giving me something. They're giving me Ag plus. Let's write that in. So Ag plus is 5.3 times 10 to the negative 5. They're giving me that. Now people will say, oh, i got to times that by 3. No! That is the value. That is the value. If they gave you this, you'd have to double by 3. And how do I know? Because there's th these are three times that, but they're giving you this value, so that is that value. Remember, don't confuse the exponent what's inside. So that is the value. If they said I'm giving you a third of the value, what they're really saying is I'm giving you the phosphate. So that goes in there. What do I do now? Well, my friends, look at the stoichiometry. There's a third of them. So what do I do with that? Can you find out what a third of 5 point Exactly. Is? So we take a third of that because it's a 3 to 1. It's stoichiometry goes inside the brackets, outside the brackets, of course, is a, pro a products of a reactants rule to get law of mass action. So 5.3. 1.7. I believe you. Let's just make sure we're on the same page together. Because I make big finger errors. 5.3 second. I need to practice too. Negative 5. Okay, divide by 3. Do I square it? Do I cube it now? No, I'm just, this is just inside. So this is, this is 3x and just x. 3 to 1. So it's got to be a third. So I'm going to divide that by 3. And did you get 1.7? Yeah. 7. 1.7. 7, 7, 7 times 10 to negative 5? Yes. Okay. And now we're done. Except now we just find the number. So we take um, 5.3. That's what they gave us. Second function. E to the E to the negative 5. And we're going to cube that. So math um, 3. Then I'm going to times that by 1.77, second function, e, e, negative 5. And if I did this correct, and please check, 2.64 times 10 to the negative 18 is my KSP. Did we get the same thing? Yes. Cool. They gave you this. This is three times that, so that has to be, so this question, definitely two-pointer. They would give you a point for taking a third of this number. That's the stoichiometry. I know that for a fact. And then they give you a point for the right answer. Okay? Yes, they're all the same. But what's beautiful in this question is they started you with what? They started you with solving for x, given the KSP, and then they gave you the opposite. There's only one of two. Okay, obviously there's other questions. Let's go find another one. All right, I'll do one more, and then I'll call it a day here. Okay, so that was a 10-point question. That was 2004, all right, 2004. All right. So for G, it literally is the 1.77? Yeah, times 10 to the whatever it was. I can't remember. Uh, my short-term memory is going up this high. All right, I know, same jokes.
gets keeps me going. All right, last one I'll do. Let's see here. No. Nope. One thing you will find is that. Nope. Two thousand five. What is the for the KSP? What's the unit for the two point six four? There is, is no unit for equilibrium. They unit. cancel out. No unit for equilibrium. Okay. Dimensionless unit. All right, so 2006. We see, now, when you're looking for a KSP and these older questions, they're going to be in the. Um, they're going to be question number one. So I see that's a, that's an acid base reaction. So moving on. Kind of giving away all the secrets to people. Feel bad now. I'm over it. And this is ha. Ah, here we go. Okay, the questions are all the same. Okay, now we didn't hit on all the different types of questions, but we hit on a lot of them. So maybe this question will do something else. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, saturated solution of pair. No, 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 no. Saturated. They're telling we're at equilibrium. So a saturated solution is, added, is, is prepared by adding excess lead iodine to distilled water in a liter of solution. The, the concentration of lead in the saturates is found to be okay. So we have a saturated solution. So lead plus two concentration is that. The chemical equation for the dissolution is here. Write the equilibrium expression. I think we can handle this. So KSP is equal to, we've got one lead, put the PB plus in the middle. Okay. There's only one of them, so it goes to one power. Nothing implies the one. And then we have iodine ion. I think we can handle that. Of course, we don't put the solid because solids and liquids don't apply. And remember, everything outside the brackets, that's due to another derivation. Now, they want to calculate, oh, they want to calculate the concentration of I. They want this concentration. Now, what they give me, they gave me, they gave me, what do they want? Calculate the concentration of I. And what I know is I have already led. What is this stoichiometry of lead ions to two ions? Let's make this bigger for. So you have the x for it, it right. x is PB and two x is I. Yeah. It's literally the same thing over and over. Yes. Okay. So I have x two x. What do they give me? The concentration of my x. So I has to be twice as bigger. So I'm going to take my one point three one. It's that simple. Twice. Yeah, so uh, 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3 is equal to my lead. And then my iodine has to be twice that. Why? Because stoichiometrically inside, there's two iodines. So that would be what? 2.6 times 10 to the negative 3. I'm amazing in multiplying that by 2. Okay. Oh, and we forgot something. Uh, so the answer for A would be just this number. It's got to be what? twice as concentrated, it's saturated, because twice as many ions break apart. Now, I, I captain says, cut the molar concentration of I negative. Oh no, that we just did that. So we did one, two, cut the value of the key equilibrium constant. Well, that's easy, right? We have the concentration of iodine. Square it. Square it. And hey, right, so come on, party people, we can do this. There's nothing said or, or, or daunting about this once you start seeing that these are the same questions over and over again. 2.6 e to the negative 3, and I'm going to square that, and then I'm going to times that by 1.3, second function e, e, negative 3, and that gives me 8.79 times 10 to the negative 9, am I right? Sometimes I got big finger errors. Okay, and it's pretty insoluble too. Boy, we just ripped out three points. Okay? Oh, B says saturated solution. All right? Is prepared by adding lead iodine distilled water to form two liters. Okay? Now, this is a classic question. They're changing the volume of the solution and they want to know what the concentrations of the PB plus 2 and PBI are. What's saturated mean? Equilibrium. Right. I don't care if I'm in 2 liters, 400 liters, 0.1 liters, the concentrations are temperature sensitive, not volume sensitive. 
Now, if they said what happens to the number of moles, it that would change. It. Right, because by adding water, think about this, by adding water, you're going to be here. Q is going to be less than K, so more is going to dissolve until it reaches the what? The new equilibrium, well, the same equilibrium concentration. But the values don't change, so these would be exactly the same, and your reasoning would be that the solution remains the same because the concentrations are at equilibrium, which are temperature sensitive, not volume sensitive. Remember, molarity, that's what this is, is moles per liter. It's a ratio of moles per liter. So the moles will increase as much as they need to to keep to, the equilibrium. To, to keep it at the same molarity. Okay. Okay, because obviously, if you've got more, what, two liters, and the molarity is still 1.3 times 10 to negative 3, this mole value will increase, but the value of the mole, this, this still stays the same value. Okay? The only time these concentrations will change if you change temperature. Because temperature, if it's the exothermic reaction, it'll go the, if it's, it'll go the, if you increase the temperature, it favors the endothermic way. I don't know which way this is in dissolving the salt. Okay? So that's important. We've seen that before. We've seen that in one of our tests where, uh, and people said, oh, and re restatus is equilibrium. People said, oh, it's got to change. No, it's still at equilibrium. It may initially change, but it'll go back to it, the same concentration. They said it was saturated. So you've seen that before. Okay? I bring up the mole because I feel like then I write a new problem and, talk, and then try to sketch you with the mole. I don't know. All right, so moving forward. So letter uh, C. Solid sodium ionides added to a solution of lead iodide. Assuming the volume of the solution does not change, we've seen that before, does the molar concentration increase or decrease? Are you kidding me? <laughs> the same thing. I'm adding what? Sodium iodide, which I'm really adding is what? I, I right, sodium iodide is going to dissociate. Remember, sodium is always soluble to Na plus and I negative. So you're adding a common ion. So you're increasing this. So we've been down this road before. So it's going to be spontaneous in the reverse reaction? Right, because? Uh, because the, if you're increasing the product, um, then you need to decrease the amount, and so it's going to push it in the reverse reaction. So based on the Chatelier's principle, if you're going to increase the iodine concentration, the reaction's going to shift to lower it, okay? However, that's one way you could say it. For me, I know I have my KSP here, if I'm increasing I, this is now going to be Q. So Q this is Q. Being greater than K. Right, Q is greater than K. That means the reverse reaction is spontaneous. This is exactly like the last question. Okay. Even All the right. reasoning is like Q. It's exactly. Exactly. They, they, and then this question, they wanted you to do Q. Q, versus, Q is greater than K. The reverse happens. They could ask you if it's going to precipitate. In this case, it was just like the one we just picked. Okay. Uh, uh, so now. Know if it precipitates, if it goes in the reverse reaction. Yeah, because the reverse reaction, remember, you have your solid and you have your ions. And so it's going to push towards making the solid. It's going to push this way, which means you're going to lose your ions to make more solid, so you're going to see precipitation. Okay. Just like the uh, cobalt complex lab we did last year, silver, silver chloride was oh, added, and it precipitated and it changed pink. Same, same, exact, same exact thing, okay. except you weren't dealing with, um, oh, you were dealing with KSP with that reaction. Yeah. Okay, so... Last part, assuming that the volumes are additive, calculate the molar concentration of barium, oh, different thing. KSP of the salt is that. Okay. All right. So I have two solutions. I have barium chromate and I have sodium chromate. And we pour these two solutions, no precipitate is observed. See, that screams to me. When I pour these guys together, and here's my KSP, if no precipitate was occurred, then therefore my Q is less than K. So I can add more, okay? But I'm just writing that down. All right, assuming that, count the molar concentrations. So I is kind of asking for you to tell me what the concentrations are of barium plus and chromium plus. The reason that it's barium plus and chromium plus is because the NO3 and the Na are both spectator ions. Right, so okay. we have the value, so we have nitrates. And even if it wasn't, they're asking about the dissociation of this, which is going to be small because this guy is what? This, this guy right here is insoluble uh, pretty much. And so is this because it's getting negative 2, positive 2. But the bottom line, right. So we're adding barium nitrate to a volume of barium chromate. Okay? 
Um, also, no, we're adding barium nitrate to sodium chromate, no precipitate. Now, here's the key. You're pouring solutions together. Anytime you pour solutions together, the molarities, okay, now that's the KSP, the molarities are going to do what? Get diluted on pouring solution together. This is the concentration of the barium plus two ion in 500. in 500. But when I pour that into another solution that's 500, and now it's going to be to a liter, so it's going to be cut in half. Okay, in this case, it's pretty easy. You just cut it in half for both of them. You can divide that by two. But if you don't see that, that's where the MV equals MV. Anytime you pour two solutions together, okay, you're going to dilute. So if you don't see that, and you're just, you're, you know, you don't see that, what we use is molarity times volume equals molarity times volume. I'm just going to just throw that in there. Um, and so the original molarity here is 8.2 times 10 to the negative 6. The volume is 500 milliliters. You don't have to, you don't have to convert here. You're not solving for moles. And the mol, uh, what's the new molarity in our new volume, which now is 1,000? So you can see what we're doing, okay? So you're dividing by that, okay? Notice I'm making that. It's the same as really dividing by two, okay? Because a thousand is twice that of 500, but it's all good. So if you want to do that, what do you get? Obviously, it's going to be 4.1 times 10 to the negative six, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now the reason that I know I'm just cutting in half is I'm starting with 500 milliliters, and I'm adding. 500 milliliters. So you're doubling so, the volume, so you need to have I'm the Exactly. Okay, I'm cutting the solution in half. But if you don't see that, just plug it in and solve. For, this is the new total volume, the 500 plus 500. Solve for the new. So they can always think of new over here. But every time I pour solutions together, you have to adjust. Here they're nice. They're basically asking, show me what happens to them. So they both be cut in half. 8.2 times 10 negative. So this would be 4.1 times 10 negative second. This will be 4.1. Doing one, you're doing the other. Okay? Now, I, I, Captain, use the molar concentration of BA and iodine ions as determined both to show why precipitate does not form. So if I'm showing a precipitate does not form, what I'm doing, and here's my K or KSP, for I have to show that Q on this side is greater or less than? Less than, less than K. I'm going to show that. So I'm going to solve for my Q. And what's my Q? Those concentrations. Now, so let, let's think about this. Uh, the formula is barium sulf barium chromate solid breaks apart to barium plus two plus the chromate negative two. I'm just writing that to see what I'm doing here. Okay, it's an equilibrium. Now. That's how the equilibrium would look like. Now, to solve for Q, I need a KSP or a Q formula, which is products of reactants. So the Q is going to equal to barium plus 2 concentration times the chromate concentration. It's a 1 to 1. So what did we just find? 4.1 times 10 to the negative 6 squared, right? Same number. Same number. Right? They're both, oh, the, yeah. they're both the same yeah. number. And I'm just being fancy, so pinky up. Okay. Okay? If you want to write it out together, you can. So what do we have? 4.1. Second function. 1.681 times 10 to the negative 11. Yeah, I think so. Negative 6. Ooh, Christmas. Big function. Oh, uh, no, that's not. Yeah, I can do this. I'll trust you. What do you get? 1.6. Eight times, times 10. 10 to the negative 11. Okay, good. All right, that's my Q. That's my reaction quotient. That's my value not at equilibrium. And our KSP, they told us, was what? 1.2. So the KSP is 1.2 uh, times 10 to the negative 10. And because that's negative 11 and that's negative 10, the Q is smaller than the K. Q is smaller than the K. Therefore, the fold reaction is more spontaneous. And really, all you have to say is Q is less than K. And, you, and the AP reader is very happy. And therefore, the forward, I would definitely add that. And the forward reaction is more spontaneous.
Okay, so we did two. Did we cover every single possible problem? No, because I think the one that's probably missing now is if I was the poor one, which salt um, precipitates first? Okay, and that's that the, be the one that's be the one that uh, when you solve for the x for one of the salts, that's the one that's going to be the smaller because as you pour the ion into it. Okay, that's going to reach that one first. But now that you understand what goes inside, what's outside, clearly delineated, these are easy. Mm -hmm. These are easy. Yeah. All right, I hope that helped. Cool. Do another one on your own. Go find another KSP and then look at the key and if you've got a problem, let me know. Maybe someone else can use this. I don't know.